Good to see you back. So I was playing with my dog this morning when I had a really disturbing thought. I realized that he understands plenty of human words, but I don't understand any dog barks. Does that make him smarter than me? <sighs> well, at least you're not paying anything for this class, right? Where were we anyway? Ah, that's right. AV bin loop uncompressed. We've learned some really great stuff so far, but apparently this product is way more useful when you actually make it play something. How about we scratch that one off the list? First, let's launch WinScript Live and open up the script we were working with in the previous lessons. Hey, what the? I don't know what's going on here, but obviously I'm not a cat. I am perplexed. I'll have to get my assistant to look at my computer, but we don't have time for that, meow. All right, the first thing we need to do is tell WinScript that we have loaded a media file to the bin loop and give it some important details about the file, such as the clip name, frame rate, and length. The best place to do this is in the media file screen, which you can access over here in the resources tab. Notice how the list is empty right now, but we can click up here to create a new file. So first we have to give it a name, and all that really matters from this is the clip number, the number to the right, but just to be simple and safe, I recommend you take the name that we used in the actual creation of the video clip, as seen here. Okay. We're going to select image sequence for the type. This is an AMT image sequence at a frame rate of 59.94. As for the length, the best way to get this is to look at the folder itself. Each frame has its own file. If you look at the last file, it's frame number 2596. If you enter that here, WinScript will automatically perform the conversion for you. 43 seconds, 16 frames long. Okay, great. We've told WinScript that a file exists on the uncompressed bin loop, and this is its name. So how do we put it to good use now? All right, I'm just going to go to the sequences list here, and I'm going to go ahead and add a new sequence. We're going to make it a time sequence in the timeline view. Okay. Let's take a look at it. Now, all I have to do to play this video clip is to expand over here, media files. Here's our file. And then I can just grab it, drag and drop it right into the timeline. Just like so. If I double click the event here, the track, we can see here that it's using an event called S-Play, stands for synchronous play in the bin loop. And it's playing the clip name Coaster 1080p 59.00001. Okay, this source is also very important. This is the channel in the uncompressed bin loop we wanna play this file on. For this current example, we're gonna play from the first reproducer, R1. Okay. Believe it or not, that's all there really is to it. All you have to do is get connected to the V16, load the script, and just go ahead and start this sequence. And playback will begin. When you're using time-based sequences to do playback control like this, any control of the sequence automatically results in control of the media tracks within the sequence. For example, if I click pause, the sequence and video clip pause together. Clicking start will resume both. Clicking reset will stop both. You can even click on the timeline to skip forward or backward in the clip to scrub, like this. Pretty cool stuff. I suppose I should mention that this is just one way to control the bin loop. 
You can also control it using regular events. So for example, I have a logical sequence here. I can create a new event for the bin loop. And you'll see we have a full list of commands that we can issue to the bin loop. Loop clip is a great one that doesn't require a timeline. So I just wanted to play the clip and loop it on reproducer one, channel one. And I can put, pick my coaster clip here. Okay, now if I just run this, it's just gonna loop my clip indefinitely. No timeline required. One last important point before we go. It's common to control more than one bin loop channel with a single playback command. In an earlier lesson, we assigned multiple channels to a group for this purpose. Once channels have been grouped, controlling that group is as easy as selecting it as the source. Just keep in mind that every channel within the group must have a clip with the same name, or at least the same clip number. All right, meow. Hopefully now you're feline better about how to play content in the AV bin loop uncompressed. Just imagine the possibilities. All right, shoo, get on out of here. I'll see you in the next lesson.